This second episode propels the plot forward, with a confrontation between Osha and Sol and his long-lost, presumed dead sister May. It is once again directed by creator and showrunner Leslie Headland from a script by Jason Mikalif and Charmaine de Grete. It turns out that May also thought Osha was dead, which comes as a huge shock to all those concerned. Osha purposefully misses a shot that would have prevented May's escape vehicle from pursuing her after their equivocal battle, enabling the vowed Jedi murderer to go to battle another day. As it happens, the four Jedi who were on duty on May's homeworld the day her house and family burned are on her assassination list. The group of four consists of Inara, who was already killed by one of May's throwing knives, Torben, Dean Charles Chapman, who chose to live a life of silent meditation in retaliation for whatever had happened, Kelnaka, Juna Suotamo, a Wookiee Jedi who now lives in the forest and scares off scavengers with a lightsaber like a Sasquatch, and Sol. May intends to go four for four with the aid of a weapon smuggler named Kimir, Manny Jacinto, who seems to be a sincere believer in the cause of May's enigmatic master regardless of how he presents himself to the Jedi during their interrogation. In episode two, the acolyte action returns to Olega, where May is assisting a young local in bringing down a robot that is defending a Jedi temple. After breaking in successfully, she finds Jedi Master Torben and tells him the same thing she told Indara. With Torben in a meditative trance, May is unable to break through his force shield this time. She tries to murder him but escapes via the roof as the guards become aware of an intruder. When they return to their ship, Sol informs Vernstra that he thinks May is responsible for the attack on Indara. Vernstra seems to concur, noting that something else happened when Osha was under their care. Convinced that the issue must be resolved quickly and covertly, to avoid giving the impression that the Jedi Order is weak to its adversaries in politics, Sol sets off for Olega, informing Vernstra that he thinks Osha will be of great assistance. Back in Olega, May goes into the neighborhood pharmacy to talk with the proprietor. It soon becomes apparent that Kimir, one of May's supporters, has taken over as the owner. May lets out her aggravation at not being able to murder Torben, implying that the master wants her to kill Indara, Torben, Kelnaka, and Sol, the four Jedi stationed on her home planet of Brendok, while carrying out a kill without the use of a weapon. After buying Kimir off, he gives May a lethal potion, and May leaves for the temple. Yord isn't pleased with their strategy, but when they go to the Olega temple, they question the guard about what went wrong. Once more, the youthful resident names Osha as the one who made the payment, and Sol requests to talk with Torben. Although the guard claims Torben hasn't spoken in 10 years, Sol is certain he will speak for him. May arrives first, and by the time the gang discovers him, he has passed away. Telling May he's been waiting for her, Torben took the potion on his own initiative after receiving a warning. When the body is discovered with Osha, it raises questions, but Yord swiftly follows her and claims she is innocent. Osha acknowledges that the trace of poison was something she and her sister were trained to use on their country, despite the fact that there was no indication of a battle. The gang is trying to think of a way to intercept May, who they know is still in the city, now that they have lost a second Jedi. The temple guards notice that Kimir isn't their typical drug dealer, so they stake him out. Following some discussion, they decide to record Kimir's knowledge of May's scheme and force him to confess by sending Osha to the pharmacy in her sister's stead. As Osha executes the plan, Yord and Sol realize she is a fraud right before Osha is exposed. Kimir asserts that he is unaware of May's trainer or co-workers. He claims he can manufacture anything they desire for the proper price, but if they want to capture May, they need to return that same evening. Osha is all for removing May, but Sol gives hope by stating that he wants to talk to May directly. May is told by Sol that she is not allowed to be at the sting because she wants retribution. Instead, Jetski has the ship set and poised, and Yord is on watch. May and Sol get into a brawl as soon as they go out onto the street. May doesn't genuinely know who taught her, so even if she wanted to, she couldn't tell anyone, according to Sol, who attempts to read May's thoughts. May finds herself surrounded against the Jedi when Yord manages to intercept a knife that is headed for Sol. Jetski makes her formal arrest from the ship, and Sol informs May that Osha is still alive. She doesn't believe him, so she uses her magic to conjure up a sand cloud and vanishes within it. After learning about the situation from her pit droid, Osha departs the ship to look for May. When May finally finds her, she is astounded to discover Osha aiming a revolver that Sol had earlier given her at her sister. Uncertain whether on purpose, Osha misses, sending May running into an adjacent street. 
May manages to reach Kimir while the apothecary is the focus of the temple guard's attention. She tells him that she should murder him for betraying her, but Kimir has other ideas. He intends to flee to an alleged Wookiee Jedi outpost. The acolyte cuts to two adventurers who stumble across an abandoned ship in Kofar. The two find an unreadable sign and assume they may examine it for components. Jedi Master Kelnaka, a Wookiee, seems to assault the two at the same time.